All right, let's get going. Welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to hear about our handheld scanning and I wanted to go over a few of our logistics before we get started. Since we have such a large group, all attendees are participating in listen-only mode. But don't worry if you can ask questions at the end. Uh, we will be recording this session, and so that will be sent to you and made available after the webinar. And as I mentioned, we welcome your questions. Please utilize the GoToWebinar panel on your screen and type in your questions into the questions pane. If we run out of time at the end, don't worry. We will be sure to address your question after the webinar. As always with our building with Trimble, Buildings with Trimble webinar, we have goals. Today we have four. Our first is our simplicity. We want you to learn about how our intuitive user interface makes virtually anyone on the construction site a seasoned veteran of data acquisition in a very short time. You're going to learn about how our handheld imaging technology can be used to supplement traditional scanning processes as a means of speeding up that time to deliverable. You'll hear about our innovative compression technologies that simplify the pack and share processes, enabling stakeholders to move data back and forth simply and easily. And finally, this is all going to be available at a low cost price point, which is going to open up the world of 3D image capture to almost every stakeholder on the construction site. And now for some quick introductions. My name is Christy Hunt. I'm coming to you from Folsom, California at one of our Trimble offices. Joining me from the Westminster, Colorado office, we have Brian and Jim. And out on the East Coast in very cold Boston, we have Tom with us today as well. So let's, uh, let's learn a little bit more about our guest speakers today. Uh, joining us is uh, Jim McCartney. Jim is Trimble's market manager for Field Solutions. And in his over 17 years with Trimble, he's held a variety of roles in sales, key accounts, and marketing. In his current role as market manager, he's responsible for our field solutions strategy and roadmap, partnership relations, product development, and product management. Now Tom, way out there in Boston, he joined, Tom Greaves joined Dot Product as Vice President of Marketing and Sales. He founded the SPAR Point Group in 2003, which hosts the world's largest conference on 3D scanning, and was acquired in 2009. He joined Dot Product from SciArc, where he held a position as Executive Director. Previously, he worked as an analyst for Daratech and as a field engineer for Schlumberger. He holds physics and business degrees from MIT, the University of British Columbia, and Queen's University. And last but not least, our field solutions segment manager, Brian Williams, is with us tonight. He has over 28 years of international experience working in the construction industry as a site engineer, construction surveyor, project supervisor, and consultant. He spent the last 14 years developing and marketing intelligent position solutions for the construction industry as part of the Trimble GCCM division. And so with that, I'm going to pass control over, and um, I believe, Jim, you are our next speaker. Thank you, Christy. I'd like to welcome everybody, and thank you all for joining us on the webinar. Uh, I think, as Christy mentioned, we have some pretty specific goals on what we want to do today. I think one of the key points that I'd like to address initially is, uh, as you saw on our title slide, uh, Trimble's ultimate goal is to transform the way the world works. And I think even more importantly for what we're talking about today, the goal of Trimble Buildings is to transform the way contractors work. Uh, what you'll learn in our webinar uh, over the next 45 minutes or an hour, uh, I think will help to clarify what we're trying to do to help transform the way contractors work. Uh, our goal here is obviously to provide simplistic solutions, uh, ones that use very high technology but offer a very simple capability and expand the uses for lots of people on a job site. Um, we have the opportunity to expand the use of 3D data. Uh, it's somewhat difficult and cumbersome to learn today, and we believe that the technologies that we're looking for and and the technologies that we're introducing to the marketplace help that uh, to become much easier for people. Uh, this search to transform the way contractors work uh, led us to uh, a partnership with a company called Dot Product, and we have Tom Greaves with us tonight, who's from Dot Product. Um, over the course of the last several months, we've been working toward a partnership between Trimble and Dot Product, and this has led us to 
uh, where we are today, which is a joint partnership, and it is highlighted by a reseller agreement that Trimble and Dot Products have entered into, and Trimble will be a reseller for the products that you're going to see today. And uh, Tom is going to be kind enough to join us today and uh, give us a bit more insight into specifically what that is, how it works, and what the benefits are for all of you out there. And uh, we'll follow up with Brian Williams, uh, giving some more detail on some of the use cases, capabilities, and some of the ways that you can use that data. So I'd like to hand over to Tom and, and let Tom take care of all the details about the product. Thanks very much, Jim. Oh, there's our first slide. So I welcome. Uh, greetings from Boston. Good morning to all of you. Uh, let me get started with just a, a few remarks about how our technology works, the principles of measurement. Um, this is a, on, your, on your screen you'll see a picture of the sensor. Uh, there are three eyes on the front of it. There's an infrared projector. This is sending out a, a pattern of infrared dots that can be detected, that are detected by the infrared receiver. Um, and we'll, we'll see what those dots look like in, in just a minute. But uh, the receiver can detect um, the pattern of dots and determine uh, the angle to a specific set of dots uh, in the, both the azimuth and zenith. So we get two angles. Um, the distance between the projector and the receiver is, is well defined. So with two angles and a, and a distance, we can compute the depth. So what the sensor is doing is depth mapping RGB data. So it's essentially producing a sequence of digital photographs and each pixel in the photograph has a, an X, Y, and a Z coordinate. And uh, our software takes that stream of uh, depth mapped RGB data and stitches it together um, in a colored point cloud. And I, I'm going to be showing this to you in, in just a, a, a few minutes. Okay, if I could have the next slide please. This is a video showing the, the principles of the depth measurement. Not at work. Suppose you wanted to figure out how far away things were from a camera. How can you tell the difference between a small nearby rabbit and one that's larger but farther away? They both could look the same from the perspective of a camera. This is where a second eyeball or camera can help. If we draw lines from a rabbit to both cameras, they form a triangle so we can calculate how far away the rabbit is using some trigonometry. It's not as simple as just adding two cameras, though. You have to make sure you're drawing lines from the same rabbit. If there are two rabbits in the scene, how can I make sure I'm measuring from the same rabbit? And what if the rabbits are all red and the background is red, too? The Kinect can actually handle this case. Instead of a second camera, it has an infrared projector that paints the scene with invisible markers like this. Now the rabbits can be differentiated no matter what the colors are. Whenever the camera sees a 1, it knows that object is sitting along the one line from the projector, so we can again triangulate the distance. Likewise, for any other number, it automatically knows its angle too. Now if you take a night vision camera and look at the projection from the Kinect, you won't see a grid of numbers, but rather a random speckle pattern. This accomplishes the same goal though, because no group of specks looks like any other, so the Kinect automatically knows the angle of every group and can therefore triangulate distances, just like shown before. Okay, so that, uh, that shows the, uh, the, the, how, how the device works. Um, our device is similar to, but not the same as the Kinect. Uh, we purchased uh, the sensors from the same company, um, but uh, we calibrate uh, each and every one of them in our facility in Houston, and uh, each, each unit is shipped with a, a calibration certificate. And uh, that's necessary to get the quality that, that we seek. So what are the key ingredients here? Um, I'm going to show you in just a minute that we produce real-time feedback of the data quality. The pixels on the screen when we're capturing data literally change color. They go green and yellow and, uh, as, as we capture the data. And, and what this means is that we know that when we've painted the scene green or yellow that we've captured it. We have uh, extremely high confidence that we've captured the data, that we're not going to get a nasty surprise uh, later the same day or the next day or next week uh, 
and thinking we have some data when in fact we don't. Uh, we're, we're quite certain that we've captured the data with this uh, feedback mechanism. The second thing is, and this is quite a difference to uh, tripod scanners and other scanning uh, processes you may be familiar with, is that we're doing real-time registration in the field. We're stitching the point cloud together as we go. And uh, this allows us to do a bunch of things. First of all, we can discard redundant data. Uh, we have less back office post-processing. Uh, you know, the point cloud comes out registered. But an extension of this idea is that we get to append to some data that we may have captured previously. And I'm going to show you that. So the, the idea here is you go around, um, collect some data, you have a look at it on the tablet screen, and if you decide that you're missing some data, well, you can go back and put the camera in a, in, in a known position and, and re, it will relocalize and uh, you can capture a new set of data right over top of the Right, right together with the existing data. One, one of the points that we're trying to make uh, today about the whole workflow is that it's compatible with your current workflow. So one of the ways we do this is we support the use of targets, uh, survey control. Uh, we do Again, we do the processing right on the tablet. We're not sending anything off to the cloud here. All of the processing is done, including uh, target processing. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in, in just a minute. Um, we can set up a coordinate system and, and take measurements right um, from the device itself. Uh, a couple of other points. Our file sizes are very small. The binary files are uh, of order of t 10 to 15 megabytes. The biggest one I've ever captured is 29 megabytes. That was, uh, that was a monster for us. Um, and Trimble RealWorks uh, can read those files directly. We also export to uh, industry ASCII formats, PTS and PTX uh, and PLY. So that's the, uh, the high-level view. Um, if we could have the next slide, please. I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this now. So um, we're, I'm going to watch for this real-time uh, quality feedback. I'm going to show you the append function. Um, we're going to take a measurement on some data that I've captured uh, that I will capture in just a, in a minute, and I'll show you the targets. Uh, and we'll also uh, illustrate the uh, format, file size, and, and format. I've got uh, the DPI-8 in my hands, and we're about to start scanning this uh, small mechanical room. I've got a furnace here, a hot water. This is a residential uh, basement. Got some small bore piping, one inch piping up here. And uh, back in here in this dark corner, we have some, an electrical panel. Um, another electrical panel up here. So I'm going to capture this uh, with this uh, device. So the very first thing that I do is um, hit the start mapping button. It's all warmed up, ready to go. And when I hit the start mapping button, you'll see that the pixels on the screen turn yellow and green. And this is real-time feedback. This is telling me, the user, that the data that, I'm, uh, that I can trust, the data that I'm collecting. Uh, if it's green or even yellow, it's perfectly fine. Um, I know that I have it. And uh, I know that I have it at the time of collection. That's really important. You don't want to get a rude surprise and come back and discover that you're missing some data that you thought you had. And uh, that's that can be very unfortunate if you're you know, down an electrical vault and access is difficult, uh, often you don't get to go back. It's a, it's a one-time opportunity to collect data. So I'm panning around this area, just uh, capturing it. Um, we're moving around the scene. The software is stitching the depth mapped RGB data together uh, in real time. So we're making a color point cloud. I'm getting some ducting here. A little tricky to see, get all these cameras lined up. But um, there I've got it. And I'm going to get the scanner in on that old pile of books. And we'll go back here. And you can see it's one handed operation. Occasionally I need, the only time I need two hands is to hit the start and the finish. It's handy to have a spare hand for grabbing onto a stairwell. 
a stair railing or a, the side of a scissor jack. We've done, been in those situations with this device. Very grateful to be able to just operate it with one hand. Okay, so we're going to finish here. So I've saved this data. Those uh, red tags are April tags. They help the software uh, stitch the data together, but uh, they're not certainly not necessary. We've also got some targets, uh, which I'll show you in just a minute. There's a black and white checkerboard target. Uh, if you have survey control, if you're using this data in conjunction with a laser scanner or a total station, uh, our software plays nicely with uh, the, both those uh, kinds of devices. So um, we've got a little bit. There's, we didn't get that panel in the back. I'm going to get that in a, in a subsequent operation here. But you can see we get to have a quick look at the data. It looks awfully good. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the coordinate system. Um, and the coordinate axes are aligned in the direction initially of the in the direction in which I had the camera pointed. So we're going to set Z up to make it uh, fit with the convention of CAD and GIS. So I pick up set the origin down on the floor. I hit the Z button here and pick a point. The software draws a patch of data around that point and then set Z perpendicular. You can see the blue Z axis pointing up now. And we'll do something similar. We'll put the x-axis perpendicular to the wall, like that. Picks a patch, and now we have a much more reasonable coordinate system, x, y, z. And with that, then we can take a measurement. So I hit the measure button, take a new measurement. We're going to do this measurement in decimal inches to begin with. So I pick a point on top of the furnace, zoom in there. And then I'm going to pick another point on the floor. And we can see that um, if I look to zoom in here, let the camera focus, the web camera focus. Yeah, 32.4 inches um, from the top of the furnace to grade. And we'll change the units to uh, U.S. survey feet. Uh, and we find that that uh, turns into 2.7 zero US survey feet from the top of the furnace to grade. Okay, so that's uh, that's how we take a measurement right on the spot. It's really, really easy. Um, next, uh, we're going to optimize this data. I'm going to pick the... I'm going to use those, uh, those two-dimensional uh, QR code funny-looking targets that turn red. They're called April tags. And uh, we're going to use them we don't have to use them. The optimization in this case would work fine without them, but uh, our software is a good surveyor. It likes to close loops. It likes to do a traverse, and these tags uh, are, are helpful in that regard. If there, if there is a loop to be closed, uh, the, uh, the software will find it more readily using these April tags. Okay, so there we go. We've optimized the data, and I want to go, I mentioned I wanted to go back and in, into that corner and get that, it's all black in there right now, we can't see anything. I want to go back and get that panel that's in there, that's missing. So I'm going to hit the append button. And when I bring up the append button, I'm given a palette of images here. And if I put the camera back in one of those, I'm going to pick this one. If I put the camera back in that position, you can see there, that's what it looks like. And I'm going to line these two up. I hit select to append. We'll have to go through a little warm-up cycle. It'll take uh, about uh, oh, 15 seconds or so. And what I'm going to do is put the camera back in the approximate position where it was in that frame of data. And I'll get a little guidance from the software when I'm getting close. When I do that, the camera will relocalize. It'll say, I was here before. And it will allow me to collect some new data that's in the same coordinate system as the original data. So essentially what we're doing here is real-time field registration. So I hit the start append button and then I have to line up these uh, the ghosted image that I get on the on the scanner. There it is. And I know it, it worked because the pixels turned yellow and green. So the camera is saying, okay, I know where we are. I know where I am. And now you can go and collect some new data. So I'm walking over to the uh, to the control to this electrical panel into this dark corner and I'm going to go up there and slowly get it 
see if I can adjust the video camera so you can see me capturing it. All right, I think we have it. And I'll just hit finish here. And we'll go back. And we're making a backup copy. Almost done. There we are. Now we'll zoom, we'll rotate and pan around till we get into. Yes, you can see, even on this web camera, that I was able to go back into that corner and get that electrical panel. It's up there, right up there. Okay. So crystal clear. So the registration of the new data that we've collected with the old data is very very tight. I can't tell by looking on the screen where the old data uh, ended and the new data begins. It's very, very tight registration. So this is useful. You can see one of the use cases for this uh, device is getting shadowed or difficult to reach areas. Uh, our device is ideally suited uh, to that uh, purpose. Okay, so um, we're going to optimize this data because we haven't optimized the new data. We'll just... Uh, do that just take a, a couple of seconds we're doing everything on the tablet we're not sending anything off to the cloud we get the results instantaneously when we're in the field no Wi-Fi connection required to to make this work if you have Wi-Fi we can load this data right up on Dropbox or some other you know uh, uh, hosted service such as the one that triple has for example but um, it's uh, it's not necessary Okay, so now we're going to hit the Targets button, and the software will run through and look for those targets. We're not going to do a, a georeferencing based on targets in, in this session this afternoon, but uh, we'll just do a give you a quick demo of here. i um, going to select that target. Oh, go back there, sorry. We're going to call that uh, target 101. And I'm just going to put it at 13, 12, 11. Okay. So when I, the software automatically recognizes the targets, and I can assign those targets to. Uh, uh, target coordinates that I may may want to download for my total station or I can set them up on the on the spot on the tablet itself the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, georeferencing to known control systems is uh, is very very easy on this tablet it takes a uh, very short time and it and it can be done again locally so last thing we're going to do here is uh, save this data I'm going to save it first of all in the binary file format uh, the .dp file format. We'll call this uh, Trimble Demo 5 and we'll save it in that user divine coordinate system. And then we're going to export the data. Um, Trimble RealWorks will read our binary files directly and uh, no need to go to, to an ASCII format, but we can. We can export into uh, um, PTX or PTS. I'll choose PTS this time, and we'll save this as a as a as a Trimble demo 5.pts file. Save scene. This will take just a little bit longer because the um, uh, PTS files are 50 times larger, 40 or 50 times larger than their corresponding DP files. We have a lossless compression scheme that is very, very efficient. So the points I'm trying to make here, the um, we get real-time feedback about the quality of the data we're collecting. We get real-time stitching of the data as we go. We have a unique append mode where we can add to existing data. Um, we play nicely with uh, total stations and tripod laser scanning workflows through the use of targets. And we export to industry standard formats such as uh, PTS and uh, PTX, uh, PTG. And our binary file format is uh, well supported by the industry. And we're very proud that Trimble Wor RealWorks uh, uh, is one of our part uh, 
Trimble is one of our partners, and Trimble RealWorks can uh, ingest our data directly as a as a .dp file. Okay, so that's uh, that's what we have to show here. Um, just just about finished uh, this save operation, and I'll pass it back to Brian. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Christy. You bet. So, uh, everybody, welcome. I'd like to talk now uh, about uh, how you can take that simple technique that Tom showed us and apply it to a job site application. So I'm going to talk about a few of those. First of all, if we look at um, pre-construction, uh, we can take uh, and capture an area of interest uh, that might be in an existing structure that we want to tie into. So we can uh, use the DPI-8 scanner. We can capture those areas just in the way that Tom, Tom mentioned there. We could use it in conjunction with a tripod data scanner set as well if we wanted to, but it's not necessary. We could capture uh, the right amount of data with the DPI-8 that we need. Uh, we can take that data into Trimble RealWorks. We can model that data if we want to, and then we can compare that to the design model. So we can take the point cloud or the model data and compare that to our existing design of intent that we have and do some pre-evaluation of how we're going to tie into that existing structure. Now if we look at once we start uh, in the construction process, we, want, we might want to be able to capture the status as we're going along. As you can see, the unit is quite small, something that we could carry around with us and simply capture information about uh, what has been constructed that day. We could bring that, um, uh, as Tom mentioned, the file sizes are small. We can share that data very easily and quickly, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later in the presentation. But we can start comparing that to any um, constructible BIM model that we have. Uh, we can do some an analysis. We can see where things have changed from the original intent, and that can help us look at uh, where we are uh, what part of the process we're, we're in at that particular point in time. We can use that information then to uh, potentially adjust our scheduling. We can use it to uh, evaluate the data and see uh, if there's been some significant changes that might uh, incur some additional costs on a job site. And so we can make some critical decisions based around this uh, three-dimensional data rather than um, 2D documentation of the data. If we look at uh, what has been uh, actually constructed and how that compares to the constructible intent is we can take this information, as I mentioned before, we can compare that to the model. So for instance, we could bring this into Trimble RealWorks, compare this scan data to uh, the model and see where the deviation uh, is from that construction intent. or we could compare that to another point cloud that has been previously captured. So, for instance, if I went out um, yesterday, had scanned some information, and today we see it have some new construction, we could simply compare those two point clouds and see the deviation between the two. So then, again, we can start to highlight uh, uh, where things are going well or what has changed from the uh, original intent. and start to see um, some of the small variations uh, in uh, what should be built, what is being built, and uh, be able to capture things that are critical during the process so that we highlight them early in the process, thus saving us money in the longer term. If we look at using uh, this technology uh, to supplement uh, as, a, uh, as additional documentation, one thing that uh, we talked about, and you can see in the screen capture that I have uh, on the right-hand side of this slide, is I'm com uh, combining two data sets, one on the right-hand side, which is from a traditional uh, tripod-based scanner, and the one on the left, which is uh, captured with the DPI-8 uh, data capture scanner, and we're uh, combining the two together. So you can see that traditionally we would collect a higher level of detail with a tripod-based scanner, uh, just because that's the instrument of choice that we have. But here you can see that I can do a broad stroke and grab, capture a large segment of the area and infill the detail with this handheld device. 
the advantage of the handheld device is that we can get into areas where you may not be able to fit a traditional tripod-based scanner. Some examples of that, of, of that might be, say, in a mechanical room, maybe up above the ceiling tiles, or just in those tight spaces that it's difficult to get um, a tripod into, for instance. So we can supplement and combine these data sets to infill uh, the information that we're, uh, that we're trying to capture. The other thing is that we could use this data uh, to add additional documentation. So uh, one example of that might be uh, we have, uh, uh, we're out on site and we spot some p uh, potential safety concerns. Well, instead of just noting that down and hopefully remembering to in, uh, inform somebody later on, we can simply uh, take out our handheld scanner and we can scan that particular area, document it, and easily share that with somebody else. We could also use it as a document process in uh, documenting what's on site um, and what's in place. So much easier uh, to capture this data and remembering that it's uh, three-dimensional. So one thing that Tom showed, you can, uh, you can take dimensions with it. Or if later on we need to do some as-built modeling, we could take that data and, and model the data. So when it comes to as-built documentation, we can get into lots of different areas and we can use the device to be able to uh, capture information that we need to document for as-building. So an example here is that you can see the scan data in the top left uh, and you can see some dimensions taken from it and we can put that into uh, a plan-based plan -based view where we can then actually even create a plan um, documentation uh, for that, which is re still required in lots of cases. Or in fact, you can even create a 3D model from it if, if required as well. So th there's an example of how you can use the device to do some as-built documentation. So um, there's some of the applications. Uh, there's a lot of varied um, and different types of contractors on site. Uh, they can all take advantage of this technology. As, as Tom showed you, it's very easy to use. Uh, and so you can take advantage of capturing this 3D data in, in, in a very short period of time. So what I want to talk to you about now is how we can complement and uh, put data sets together and, and start to produce some of the deliverables with this three-dimensional three data. So as Tom mentioned, we can take the binary format of uh, the DPI-8 um, handheld scanner and we can directly import that into Trimble RealWorks. Um, Tom mentioned that file that he uh, captured tonight was 9.5 megabytes or something like that. Uh, we can import that into Trimble RealWorks and it only takes uh, about 90 seconds and the data is imported and being displayed in three dimensions on the screen. Those are a couple examples for you there on, uh, on, the, on the slide here. So um, Tom talked about the target-based registration. We can import that target-based information or we can actually, if um, you didn't extract the, the targets in the field, we can extract those targets within Trimble RealWorks. And then we can use our automated target-based registration then to extract and combine uh, the data sets that have these common targets. So if we had a data set from a tripod-based data, uh, data scanner, uh, a data set from the DPI-8, we can bring these two together using this uh, target-based registration method. Uh, one thing that Tom didn't mention is it's not always convenient to put the targets out there, although that um, makes it um, a little bit simple when you're working with coordinate systems, but it's not always convenient to be able to put them out. So we can capture the data set, we can bring it into Trimble RealWorks, and to be able to combine data sets, what we can do is use a cloud-based registration tool. We identify some common features in, uh, in the different scans, and the software will then combine the data sets together. So I want to show you a couple of examples of data sets um, that we've captured and to be able to show you how we can extract some data and how the data looks when it's combined together. So here in this uh, first example is a live recording of uh, extracting uh, some data uh, in a mechanical room and what I'm going to use is the easy pipe tool to then identify a pipe run and automatically extract the pipe run. So you can see that uh, that's done already. I'm going to delete the last sections of the pipe runs because it ran out of um, usable data at that point, so I'm going to delete those out. 
and then I'm going to simplify my model. So here's my pipeline. It's broken into small se uh, sections. Now I'm going to smooth that out into its main elements, create the model, and there we have a pipe run modeled in real time with the uh, DPI-8 scanner data. Next I'm going to show you uh, uh, some data from the handheld device and how I combine that with a static based scanner. Oops, sorry, too far. So here's the data from the, uh, the handheld device captured in a storage room um, looking at the mechanics up in the ceiling. And now I'm going to bring in the um, data from two different stations from a uh, tripod-based scanning system. And you can see that um, populating the background there. And so as I scan around the scene, you can see the two different stations where I captured these, uh, these data sets, those uh, circular areas on the, on the ground there. And you can see how the, the two data sets overlap one each other. These were put together just using the cloud-based registration. So here I'm highlighting in visualization form the different colors of the different uh, scans. So this green scan is from the handheld device and the yellow and red is uh, the other two stations and you can see how the data sets uh, merge straight over the top of each other and here they are with the, the color applied to them. So you can see the high level of detail uh, that both devices capture um, but you can see how they fit and form together very easily. So let's look at um, that's, uh, how we process the information and start using the information. Now let's um, look at uh, how affordable this, uh, this type of technology fits into uh, a portfolio of products. So if we look at the um, <coughs> bottom left of, of this slide here, we can see um, traditional data capture with a, with a tape measure and documentation uh, using your uh, pen and paper to document a scene. Of course, basically you're capturing 2D information with some um, X and Y coordinates captured with your, your tape measure. Um, and then as you get um, a bit more complex and then you um, along the bottom and as you go up you can start to apply 3D positional information um, for, for BIM purposes or for virtual, virtual design construction purposes. Um, you have a co more complex solutions um, and also you increase um, the, uh, the knowledge you need to have to operate these systems. So if you look in the middle of the screen, we have the rapid positioning system that we introduced uh, recently that um, captures and positions things on a, on a job site in a very short and easy, uh, easy way. We have our robotic total stations that we've had around for a while that um, can also position and capture as-built information. And then uh, more recently, uh, you have uh, tripod-based uh, scanning systems that have been around for a while, but more recently being applied for uh, construction use. Uh, and then if you, um, <coughs> so as you go along, you're getting more and more complex three-dimensional um, data, which then can be used um, to create BIM models or can compare to BIM models and uh, extract information that can be very useful for making critical decisions uh, during the construction process. If you look at the handheld 3D acquisition, the pricing is positioned uh, much at the lower end, um, and you're collecting, as you saw with Tom collecting the data, you're getting three-dimensional information. So this information over time, oops, sorry, can span um, the use within these BIM and VDC uh, type of applications. So uh, although there is very affordable technology, it's very powerful in the data it can capture. Now if we look at the shareability of the data, uh, one of the things that, um, that Jim had pointed out uh, early in the presentation was one of our missions is to make sure that, uh, if, that we have good information sh uh, uh, flow uh, within the construction site for all the contractors uh, working on the job site and, and also through to the owners of the project as well. So it's important that um, data flows um, continuously through the, um, the life cycle of a project 
So we want to make that data that we capture with these handheld devices shareable. So one thing that Tom mentioned was this highly compressed format. So that data um, for some of those small data uh, captures can certainly be emailed uh, from the job site. But also uh, we can find uh, places where we can actually share the data directly with multiple users uh, that need access to the data. So Trimble Connect is a great way to do that. Um, if, as soon as you have connection to be able to upload the file, you can quickly upload that file to Trimble Connect and then multiple uh, people who have access to that project on Trimble Connect can then start using that data, uh, start collaborating together and start making informed decisions from the job site. So the data capture is fast, the processing is on board and we can share that information in a short period of time. We also have um, a 3D viewer called Trimble RealWorks Viewer that is a free download from the Trimble website that if you want to be able to view and measure and um, take cross sections with the data set, you can download, download that viewer and upload the, um, the, um, the data into there and um, start manipulating and um, using that to help you in the decision, the decision process as well. So again, just to reiterate, uh, to summarize uh, the flow of what we've showed you today, uh, Jim talked about uh, the relationship that uh, we've formed with Dot Product. We spent some time uh, trying to find the right type of solution to bring uh, to the marketplace and um, happily uh, Tom and his colleagues at Dot Product have uh, delivered a solution that we find uh, very valuable and it highlights the, the key components that we're trying to, to bring to the market the simplicity of, uh, of the use of the, uh, of the technology, <coughs> that it can be applied widely um, throughout the construction process, that the data can be complementary to other data sets, not only to other 3D scan data. Um, Tom mentioned that you can combine it with total station data uh, to align it with coordinate systems and also other um, data that you've captured with, um, with the total stations or a rapid positioning system. Uh, I've just shown you that uh, the affordability of this solution fits at, um, at the lower end, so it brings a lot of contractors um, into that area where um, they can get access to this technology at, the, at that affordable level. And also that we really focus on to make sure that data is not just kept um, by the individual cap capturing it. It needs to be shared uh, during the process and shared with a lot of people on the, uh, in the construction process. And so uh, places like Trimble Connect um, and uh, being able to have uh, free access to, to view the data is important so that everybody has access to the information. So with that, I'll hand over to Christy uh, for some questions. Excellent. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Tom, for the scan and hanging in there with us uh, late and cold evening. Thanks again. So again, if you have questions, please use the GoToWebinar panel on the, uh, the, Q the questions panel on the GoToWebinar panel. Our first question is actually regarding uh, distances and range. So is there a minimum distance the scanner can handle? So how close can you get to the features you are scanning and what's the maximum? How far away can you get? Yeah, uh, so I'll answer that question. Uh, so generally um, you're just less than uh, half a meter. Uh, so, what's that uh, work out to be uh, about a foot away or so, <laughs> um, one and a half feet away, um, out to five meters, which is around about um, 15 feet. That's the minimum sort of maximum range, um, but there are some optimal ranges within, uh, within that, um, that area that, um, that you get the best sort of uh, data in as well. So, you need to be aware of depending on uh, the type of environment you're in. Great. And a bit more on environment. So Tom was, Tom was in his basement and there were, you know, bright spots with light and dark shadowy spots as well. Um, what's, I, I, I know we've talked about environment having better conditions and worse conditions. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, I'd be happy to, to, to do that. Um, the, uh, there, there are two lighting conditions to be concerned about. First of all, our device does not work well in direct sunlight. Uh, it's an infrared device and there's too much infrared in ambient sunlight. So we are able to capture outdoors, 
Um, typically, if we have to capture outdoors, there are three, three conditions, uh, any one of which uh, needs to be met. So we can scan early in the morning or late in the afternoon when the sun is low in the horizon. Uh, that will work. Um, we can also scan when it's um, overcast. We've had very good results uh, in, you know, on, a, on a cloudy day. It's just anything that breaks the infrared uh, uh, signal from the sun. Um, the third uh, mode is to capture at night. And uh, the way that works is we illuminate the scene either with an onboard uh, LED light plus diffuser or we do it, uh, you know, we have some external lights. And uh, most artificial lights, we haven't seen any problems with, uh, with uh, the artificial lights that, that we've used. Uh, that, that works well. So that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the, the daylight constraint. Um, and then we, the infrared device will capture in total darkness, but um, you don't get any RGB data. So um, in those circumstances, extremely low light circumstances, we recommend using a, using a light, as I mentioned earlier. Great. Thank you, Tom. Uh, another question is regarding storage capacity. Uh, how, how does your storage capacity uh, translate into scanning time? So um, typically, it's, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation with scanning time. Um, the file size is, is, uh, is more a function of the scene complexity and actual surface area. So if we put the, you know, in an extreme case, you put the scanner on a tripod and don't move it, it will stop collecting. It's not getting any new information. And this is quite different to a uh, tripod scanner, which will just keep collecting data and keep collecting data. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to answer this question in a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of ways. We get about two and a half hours of continuous use with the, uh, with the, from the battery. That, that limits, you know, that's a constraint on how much scanning you can do with, a, with one single tablet. Um, the size of the point clouds are, you know, a few megabytes, you know, tens uh, of megabytes perhaps. The storage capacity of the tablet is 16 gigabytes. You can add... Uh, external SD or uh, you can add uh, SD cards to these devices and and double or triple that storage so you can store thousands of of uh, DP files uh, with the uh, with the scanner great thanks Tom um, you mentioned uh, using a tripod so is this device something that can also be used with a tripod scanner or with or I'm sorry with or without a tripod so can you use the scanner with or without a tripod? I suppose you could use this with a tripod, um, but you know one of the great advantages of having it in your hand is that you can walk around a scene and uh, capture data from you know various angles. So it's it's uh, I suppose it would be possible to do that with a tripod, but <laughs> probably more convenient to do it to walking around and moving it by hand. That's uh, the goal of having the, the handheld scanner, yes. Um, another question is, uh, Brian, you mentioned the, the RealWorks software earlier. So does the DPI-8 come with Tribble RealWorks software? Yes, thanks, Christy. So I think uh, you have some options. Uh, you can buy the, the unit uh, just by itself, just the, the scanner by itself. So for any of our customers who are existing Trimble RealWorks users, that's a good option for them. If you do not have um, Trimble RealWorks, we, we have an option where you can buy it um, kitted with uh, Trimble RealWorks included. Great. Uh, we did have another question on accuracy of, uh, of, of the scanner at distances. So obviously uh, the farther away or the, at the greater distance your, your accuracy goes down. But I believe you had some data points uh, to go along with that. Yeah, so if we look at the uh, optimum uh, data capture distances, we're looking at, you know, one to two millimeters of accuracy. As you get out in uh, the far reaches of the range capability, then um, it does start to deteriorate, so then you're, you're moving out towards more like a, a centimeter type of accuracy. Great. 
All right, and our, our final question today, and um, one that's actually in demand a bit, where can we purchase a DPI-8? What's the best way to go about doing that? Oh, I'm so glad people asked that question. Uh, so you can uh, acquire the technology uh, via our Trimble Building Point dealers, as well as our existing uh, GCCM Field Solution dealers. Um, if you're uh, one of our uh, MEP customers, uh, we have, you can uh, contact uh, some of the direct sales force uh, in that case, and they do have a couple of uh, small amount of dealers as well. Great. All right, Brian, so we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, so as you exit, thank you everyone for taking the time to join us today. We really appreciate you coming to learn more about our handheld scanning solutions. Uh, as you exit, please take the survey. It will give us a little bit more information on, on you, what you're looking for, and, and how to schedule our future webinars. Time to have a discussion with you, your team. You've learned a bit about the scanner. Now go out and find out if it's the right time for you to take on handheld scanning technology. And of course, visit our website, buildings.trimble.com. You don't need to wait for a webinar to learn more about the solutions we have to offer. They're right there at your fingertips on our website. And with that, we will end our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Jim and Tom and Brian as well. Have a great evening. Have a great morning. And we will see you next time. Thanks, all. Bye-bye.